Netflix? No, 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 no. I don't want that. Oh, come on. Today. Right now it seems to be the TV that's the problem. It's stuck on Netflix. Um, exit. Exit. Back. Power off. Power on. Super duper. Uh, let's uh, continue. So last time we were doing, let me remember, current in charge, was it? We resistivity, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, see what is coming up next. Uh. Drop off. DIFC, workbook, physics, electricity, and simple circuits. Nice. Nice. How many classes do we have? Six, isn't it, this week? Six hours, yeah. Oh, that's a double. Yeah, okay, fine, fine. No, no good, good, we're, we're, uh, we're on track, everything is good. <coughs> right. Simple circuits. You can write that down. Thank you for uploading your um, assignment. I saw five of you upload it. To figure out who's the missing one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Huh? The assignment was like until the next Monday. Yeah, I put in the wrong date, didn't I? Yeah. Because I said Monday at 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Then I put in the date for next Monday. Classic Stephen mistake. Oh well. You all uploaded it when I asked you to. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, simple circuits. Got that? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not actually uh, too difficult today. You might have studied this in high school. Do you know what a circuit is? Yeah, you kind of have a picture in your mind of what a circuit is. Um, what would you say it is? There's a chain, yep. Yeah, there's one key word you're both missing that's very important. You both have the right idea, but the key word you're missing. Something special about this path or about this chain. Uh, actually, no, it can be more than one direction, yeah. Something else? The palm nope. nope. It has to be closed. It has to be a closed loop. You can't have it broken, you know? Now, you don't need to, you don't need to write all this down. Let's just see what I have and we can rewrite it. An electric circuit is a path which electrons from a voltage or current flow. Electric currents flow in a closed path called an electric <coughs> circuit. The point where those okay, so that's kind, of, that's kind of the main point, isn't it? It's a, a path which the electrons flow from a current source, and they flow in a closed path called an electric circuit. That's the key thing. Now, before you write that down, I have a bit more to say. The point where those electrons enter an electric circuit is called the source. 
the point where the electrons leave is called the return. You know, like if this is the if the electrons come out here, it's called the source, and then they go around in the circuit and they come back in, and that's called the return. Uh, or the also called the earth ground. Um, the, the exit point is called the return because the electrons always end up at the source when they complete their path of the circuit. Uh, I think the first two sentences are enough. But here's a little picture just to show you what's happening. So you have your uh, you were saying and that you need a power source, so here it is here. And you were saying chain of electrical components, so there's one, two, three components. Uh, this is the switch, and this is the uh, what's called the load. So the load means the, the thing that's drawn the power, you know. So for example here, um, here is the source and the return. You know, it has two pins, doesn't it? So it has a source and a return, roughly. Um, and this is called the load, because it's drawing the power. Yeah. I would like you to write down the first two sentences only, and the picture. Because what's important in the picture is the words. So you've got source, control, load, and conductors. It's kind of the four things you need or should have. My, uh, I don't, I don't really want to fix my laptop because it takes too much energy. So I came up with a solution. Uh, it takes a very long time to boot up. So my solution is I don't turn the laptop off. So I turn it on in the office before coming here, and then just close the lid. This seems to work just fine. Okay. Now, you got the picture as well, the uh, four parts, source, control, conductors, and load. Everybody's got that? And that? Yeah. Okay. Now, of course, you can't draw such beautiful pictures every time uh, you want uh, to represent a circuit, because, you know, it'll take a long time. So, uh, what we do instead is we have this diagram, this convention of symbols that we use to represent different components. Uh, and here is the table here. Oh, wonderful, I have that one included. Okay, so just before you draw these symbols, I'll just run through each of them. Oops. So this is the switch. So that would be like uh, one of these guys, for example, here. This is the, the cell. Now, um, the cell is like one power source, so to speak. And the battery is multiple power sources. Now that language can be confusing, and we'll talk to people, we'll talk in a moment about that. But if you take your laptop battery, now I don't know if you've noticed this, but when you buy your laptop, the battery here, it's sometimes described as, a, whoops, as like four cells or six cells. Has anybody ever noticed that, or you just buy the laptop and whatever? Have you ever noticed that? It describes it that way? No, you'll look at it next time, okay? So you can have like a, I think this is like, Ever, like three cells, you know, like 
I think they got like three, four, six, something like that. In fact, that battery is actually a four cell one means there's actually four power sources in it. Uh, so it's multiple. Even though we think of it as one, it's actually four. Okay, so that's the battery. That's just a light. That's the symbol for the voltmeter we did last week, but that's the ammeter. Notice there's no ohm meter, because we said we don't use that. This is a resistor. Uh, a resistor is anything that uh, uh, impedes the current. Uh, so like, you know, TV could be a resistor, a light could be a resistor, whatever. And it's called a variable resistor, so this is a resistor that you can change. Now, the example you all have at home, at least I do, you know the switch on the wall where you can change the brightness? Yeah, uh, that's an example of a variable resistor because you can you know, make more resistance or less resistance. Uh, and the last one, I wonder if anyone knows this one. I think a lot of you might know these, but what about LED diode? Does anybody know that? Yeah? They're really small lights. They're really small lights. Where might you see them? On what types of things? Christmas lights. Christmas lights could be LED diodes, yes, they could be. But where else? Like uh, electronics, you know, like the little light on your computer when you turn it on, you know, something like this. And um, what's interesting about LED diodes? The reason you draw it like a triangle is because the current can only go in here. The LED diodes don't like when the current goes in backwards. It's very bad for them. Whereas with a lamp, you can actually you can actually turn it around and it doesn't matter because it's only a piece of wire, so it doesn't really matter which way around it is. Uh, the LED diodes. It, it does matter. It prefers the current to enter one side instead of the other. Okay. Now, all of these have been on the exam. Uh, and originally, when I did this last year, um, I didn't have this one on it. I, I only had these uh, uh, eight. But in the exam last year, whoever's writing the exam, I think they must be coming from an electronic background. Maybe that was their degree at university. I think they like LED liar, uh, diodes because they included that on the exam, the symbol for it. Okay. So these are the nine symbols I've seen on the last 12 years of exams. So sh this should cover you. Uh, please copy them carefully in your book. Yeah. I will talk of that in another slide, yeah. Because it seems like there's not much of a difference, right? Uh, but it's mostly just grammar. We'll, we'll get to that in a, in a slide or two. Can you see it all okay? Yeah? Okay. Close these blinds. So I told you I bought two Lego games, didn't I? Yeah. yeah okay. Pirates of the Caribbean Lego and Indiana Jones Lego. Looking forward to it. Oh, Siva, did you get your laptop fixed? Yeah. They fixed it all working back to normal? Yeah, it was just a software. Ah, good. Did it cost you much? No. That's good.
I just got it. Um, in fact, I just got my degree from that like only like two weeks ago from Griffith College. I finished. It was a two-year program. Yeah. Second in the class. Not bad because I didn't go to any of my classes. But I, I don't want to teach you bad habits here. It's important to go to class. So you get people, you get people from here. Yeah, it's not that I can't, it's just the the willpower and the energy, you know. Uh, like I had some computer knowledge. So part of the, there's two reasons I did the, the higher diploma. One to get a certificate you know, to show my knowledge. And two, it was free. I was, I was quite shocked to discover that the Irish government paid, would pay for it. I, I couldn't, couldn't believe it. Like, pay for me to do it if I want to do it? Okay. So it's, to me it seemed like it was an easy decision. So I'm doing another master's now, uh, a data master's starting in January and uh, the Irish government said they'll pay for 90% of it I only have to pay for 10% of it ok, I'll sign up so you go to class? Uh, this one is online oh. so I, I can if I want to Yeah. Uh, but I was looking at the outline of the course and it's all stuff that I know anyway so it should be ok uh, alright, you have this? Yep. next now uh, so, a couple more vocabulary items here. Uh, we have here series and parallel. So, this shows the two meanings of the word, or two different situations. You can have two items in series, which means they're connected to the one loop like this. Yeah. Uh, and you can have two of them in um, parallel, which means like this. And that's really it. So you you know this word from maths, don't you? Parallel. It's, it's like this. Okay, so that's why they're here. And what does the word series in um, maths mean? The meaning of series in maths. Yeah, yeah. But more precisely, it means adding. Yeah. Well, we won't worry about that yet. But the key thing is that you add things together. So the reason this is called series is because you, it's like you add one lamp to another lamp. And this one's called parallel, obviously, because it looks like they're parallel. Um, if you can draw these two pictures to help you remember the difference. Almost no problem. So, uh, see, but that means you're back to your uh, legal legends then. Oh, no. Only weekends. Only weekends. Very good. You're disciplined. How long would you play? How long would a session be? 
from 20 minutes up to an hour. Well, that's quite responsible. <laughs> so not all night long then? No. no okay. All right. Uh, and deck? Yeah. Yep, okay. Right, English time. So you're asking me the difference between battery and cell. It's really actually a, a grammar difference. Um, one battery is actually not called one battery. We call it a cell. So it's almost like um, singular is cell. Two or more cells is called a battery. So you know the way in English you have one mouse and two mice. So here you have one cell, uh, but you, you, you can say instead of two cells, you can say a battery. Because it's actually, I don't know, you, when I say the word battery, you can, you can only think of one thing. It's the little you know, power supply. But battery has another meaning in English. Does anybody know? Not too far off, actually. Yes, not too far off. I think of something else, though. Um, battery can mean like, maybe it's related to that, it can mean like a, a group of, of soldiers. So you can say a battery of cells, or just a battery for short. Um, so two or more cells are called a battery. So you can say, I have a three volt cell. That's fine. Right? I've connected two 3 volt cells, therefore I have one battery. Right or wrong? Right. Okay. I have three connected 3 volt cells, therefore I have one battery. Right or wrong? That's right, yeah. I have two connected batteries. No. That's wrong, because you only ever have one battery. And a battery is multiple cells. I have a 3 volt cell, therefore I have one battery. What do you think? Yeah, there's nothing, it's wrong. Because one cell cannot be one battery. You need at least two cells to have a battery. Uh, I'm simplifying the English. Uh, the problem is this. Um, you, you know in English you have these things called collective nouns. You know, nouns for groups. Like, um, what do you call a group of cows? A herd, yeah. Yeah, so how many cows do you need to have a herd? You need really at least two cows. You can't really say I have one cow so I have a herd. You need at least two. Okay, It's kind of the same thing here. You need at least two cells before you can say you have a battery of cells. Or just a battery for sure. So you need at least two cows before you can say you have a herd of cows. Or just a herd for short. You understand? Yeah. I know you love your English grammar, um, but it's just that uh, cell is usually like cow, and battery is like herd. It's like a. Could you say you have two batteries? Well, could you say you have two herds? You could, as long as they're quite separate. You know, I have one herd of cows in Dublin and one herd of cows in Cork. But if I put the two together, I don't say I have two herds. Now I have one. So because you only ever look at one circuit, you can only really ever have one battery. Because if you had another battery, it'd be in another circuit. Yeah. Um, so what do you want to write down? You could just say two or more cells is called a battery. And one battery is not called one battery, we call it a cell. So like one is a cell, one can be a cell, two or more cells is a battery. Battery is an old word that means uh, a group of soldiers with guns. So this is the reason it was used, because people imagine a group of cells being like a group of soldiers with guns that fire electrons, you know. So that's why we said a battery of cells. Uh, continue? Yeah. Right. So there's some rules when you have uh, circuits. 
So <coughs> this one is for a series. So current is constant, I1 equals I2. So let me just draw what that means. Uh, so suppose you have here a current and let's say there's one resistor, there's another resistor and so on um, and here here comes the current, current I1 flows along and at the end here you have current I2 and um, if it's in series I1 equals I2 so as long as you have one wire the current stays the same even if it passes through resistors because remember resistors only change the voltage they don't change the current, they reduce the voltage. Okay, so that's the first rule. Current is constant, I1 equals I2. Okay, so we can write that down. Got that? Next rule resistance is additive. So what I mean here is, if that has resistance 1 and that has resistance 2, you can think about it as one large resistor and the, resist oops, and the resistance here is R and that's equal to simply R1 plus R2. So resistance adds. Okay, got that? Yeah. Next. Voltage is different and additive. So, what I mean here, if I go back to this picture, I put a voltmeter here and I measure the voltage, let's say it's V1. I put a voltmeter here and measure the voltage, let's say it's V2. If I was to put one big voltmeter around both and measure the voltage, maybe you won't be surprised to learn that the voltage over both is equal to the voltage over each one added together. So the voltage combines. It's, uh, uh, oh, and it's different, of course. These Vs would usually be different because these resistors are usually different resistors. So V1 does not equal V2, but the total is the individuals added up. Okay? Got that? Yeah, is that okay? And for a battery, yeah, so like uh, if you think about here's your, here's your AA battery, and the reason it's called a battery is because, like I said, there's usually a couple of cells inside of it. So uh, let's, let's imagine, um, oh, I forgot to tell you this. The bigger side is the positive and the smaller side is the negative. Anyways, uh, just forget about the internal workings. Uh, what side is the plus on your battery? This is the, oh no, I drew that backwards, isn't I? This side is the minus and this side is the plus. Uh, let's imagine this is an AA battery, for example. Let's say it's 1.5 volts. You stick that to another battery, you know, you've done this before, put inside a toy or something. Um, you notice that you're putting the plus with the minus when you connect them. Yeah, this is actually the correct thing to do because the result of doing this is that you, it's like you create one large battery which has a voltage of 3 volts. So when they're connected plus to minus, it combines to make a bigger total. So what do you think you do if you if you put them the wrong way around? So instead of having the, the plus with the minus, you flip them and put them in backwards. You would turn them on back the opposite direction? Yeah, so what would be the result on the voltage? Uh, in the case of this, there would be no voltage because they subtract instead of add. So the rule is plus with minus causes an increase. And plus with plus or minus with minus causes a decrease. So, yeah, that's just, sorry, I'll just make it as a formula. So there's a cell that has V1. There's another cell that has V2. The total is V1 plus V2. 
Now, for that battery, you've got a good situation. Here's a bad battery. Again, that's V1, that's V2, but the total will be, um, well, I suppose since I have this one, if I imagine everything going rightwards, it'd be V2 minus V1. So, there you go. Yeah, actually, the little circle one. Yeah, I think that's one cell. Yeah, I think so. I think the AA batteries, I don't know, maybe they're two cells or something. Or maybe even more. I'd have to check, I'm not sure. But you're right, yeah. I do remember those little circle ones being called a cell. Yeah. Okay, you got that? So obviously what's going to happen next is we're going to have a look at parallel. So current is different and additive. So in parallel, it means if you have um, one current here, I1, one current here, I2, they combine to make a current of I1 plus I2. Not too surprising. Got that? So the next one is the reciprocal of the resistance is additive. So what the heck does that mean? So suppose you have one resistor here, or one, one resistor here, or two, and you want to replace that with one large resistor to make the picture the same. Uh, the reciprocal is additive. So if I call this guy OR, what it means to say is 1 over R is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So the way the resistance combines is in this unusual way that it's the reciprocal that adds. So 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 equals 1 over total. So that's a little bit peculiar. Okay. Got that? Now what about voltage? So voltage is actually constant, and that's actually something useful to know. Um, so for example, suppose you have, I don't know, resistance, resistor here, resistor here, and they go along like that. If you measure this voltage here, it will be exactly the same as the voltage here. Not only that, if you were to measure the voltage around the parallel section, it will be the same. So voltage is constant in a parallel diagram. And for the battery, when you combine cells, we'll study that later. It's actually kind of complicated. It's much easier when the cells are in series than when they're in parallel. When your battery is made of parallel cells, it's quite complicated. Okay, do you have all those rules? Yeah? Okay, let's, uh, let's have a look. There's only one example to do, but it's quite a, a long example. But it shows you all the rules in action. So here's a circuit, and you have a 5-volt cell, and a 1, 2, 3, 4 ohm uh, resistors. So I'll let you draw this and then we'll go through the steps. I want to figure out the currents in this circuit. So there'll be a current in each conductor. So let's calculate it.
Hadar. Well, I'll, I'll have to draw it too, so I'll just draw it. One, two, three, four going around. Okay. One, two, three, four. And there we go. So I kept all the numbers easy enough. So that's a 1 ohm, a 2 ohm, a 3 ohm, and a 4 ohms. And then this is 5 volts. Okay, shall we start this one? Now, this picture is um, a little bit complicated. We can make it a little bit easier if we just move things a little bit. So, can you imagine if I just pick this up and just move it out of the square. I'm not disrupting anything. You know, as long as it's still connected, like oh here, you know, like imagine this this is the uh the cell in the middle. Okay, and here's the two connections at the end, up uh, here and here. All I want to do is just lift it up and put it out of the circuit. So I think can you all be happy if I just have one, two, three, four, and then I lift this out like that. I haven't actually changed anything, have I? But it's starting to go a little bit neater now. What I'll do is I'll just straighten this circuit up. So I've just gone to this picture. Now I'll go to this picture. Oh, let me draw nicer arrows. So what I'll do is I'll just straighten up the top one, straighten up the bottom two, and then just connect it like there. Uh, this one was one, two, so that makes that one one, two, three, and four then, and that's the five volts. No, no, no. If you're happy with this middle picture, you can just change that into that in your diagram. I'm going to change these two resistors into one. So on the top I have a one and a two. So what does that combine to make? Three. That's a tray, and this one down the bottom here? Seven. And that's still five volts. Okay. Now, let me uh, combine these. Um, they're in parallel. I'll just pause there. Just I see you're drawing to catch up, so I'll just let you catch up. You're way ahead of me there, are you, uh, Matt? You're giving me the total here, is it? So, what formula do I use? One over, one over R equals one over three plus one over seven, which let's see, that's nine over twenty-one. So the R is equal to twenty-one over nine. Can you give me that uh, four significant figures. What's that? Of course, 7 plus 3 is 10 today and not 9. I don't need the calculator, thank you. Uh, 10 over 21, so that means R is 21 over 10, which is 2.1 ohms. So that is 2.1 and that's still 5 volts.
Now, now that I've reduced this, this picture, I can use that triangle, the VIR triangle. So what's the V here? 5. What's the I? We don't know. And what's the OR? 2.1. So, uh, if you don't mind, uh, Matt, when you're ready, if you can just do a 5 divided by 2.1, we can get the I here, the current. 2.38. 2.38. Is the current 2.38 amps? I don't really know if I needed that, but it's good to get it, and now we'll go backwards. Continue. So, is it okay, Tisha? Yeah. Yeah. So, let's go back to this picture. Um, what... Okay, let me just write this down, VIO. Right, what is the voltage here? Here, what's the voltage? Five. It must be the same as this, because they're in parallel. And that must be the same as the total. And the total is 5. So I know the V and I know the R, so I can get the I. So let's, uh, the top one would be 3, uh, no, it would be 5 divided by 3, and the bottom one would be 5 divided by 7. They're the two there. So can you just hit that in, please? Um, 5 divided by 3 gives me the top current. 1.666, etc. 1.67. And the bottom one? 5 divided by 7? 0.71 amps. Now I want you to notice something here. Remember we said when the current is in parallel, it combines. So here on the top is 1.67, here at the bottom is 0 0.71. They'll combine, and what will they make in total? Yeah, which is the answer you got in this picture. So my point is, after you got the first answer, you could have taken it away from this answer, 2.38, to get the second one, because you knew the total had to be 2.38. Now, if I move back to this picture, Where's the 1.67? Uh, that's it here. There's 1.67. And where's the 0 0.71? Here it is here. Okay, so if I go back to this picture, where's the 1.67? Here it is here. And the 0 0.71? Here it is here. Okay, so if I go back to this picture, where's the 1.67? Uh, here. So that's 1.67, and that's 1.67 amps. And then in this one, I'm oh sorry, I drew the current backwards because it's coming down here. So it goes up and it goes left. It goes left, goes left. Right, so that's 1.67 amps, 1.67 amps. And this one is 0 0.71 amps, 0 0.71 amps. But then they combine, and so what current do I get in the middle here? 2.38 amps. So I've worked out the current at each part of the circuit. Now this isn't, this isn't easy. I mean the lesson is called simple circuits. So it gets harder than this. Much harder. But I promise you'll like it by the end. Okay. Do I need to scroll down or um, zoom out or anything? I got zoom out. This is difficult because you have to use your imagination. You know, you have to see things and move things, right? And the problem is, 
When you play so many video games, it destroys your imagination, and you can't picture anything anymore, right? Yeah, I know. You can visualize them moving around, right? Um, when we do more difficult circuits, it actually becomes a little easier, because in a later lesson on Friday, we'll learn this technique that changes the circuit into a maths equation and then you just have to solve the equation like a simultaneous problem in maths. This is very convenient. So you take a circuit, you change them into equations, and solve the equations. Um, so you all have done simultaneous equations in maths. How many variables? Just the two. So when we do them on Friday, we'll have three variables. We'll have three equations to solve. Okay. Now, um, yeah, that's it. I should delete that. Okay, let me just see what's coming up next.